friendship today because I think that's one of the biggest problems why people can't advance in a golf swing and get better. I said it before, there's three most important things that you have to understand about uh, making a golf swing. You have to, and, and that the first is knowing where the weight is shifting, knowing what you are shifting, and knowing how the arms are swung. And if you get those three principles down or whatever, you shouldn't have a problem as far as making a pretty decent golf swing, regardless of the method in a sense. But my thing is, is that a lot of times I'm on the golf range or I'm out, you know, watching people play and people are just starting the game because I'm a big component of it. If people play better golf, absolutely they'll spend more money. I guess because that's just, to me, that's just common sense. If you, the better you play, the more you're interested in going and buying stuff. If you're not playing good or your information is not good, then people just going to give up on the game. It, it happens like that. Now, and that's not just golf. That's any sport. If you're not good at it, then why are you going to put yourself through the rigors of, you know, of disappointment in a sense? So that's why I'm another reason I'm sharing this. I, this is million-dollar information. But, hey, you know, and I'm in the process of writing a book right now. And, well, actually, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much done with the book. You know, it's whether I find a publisher that, you know, that might be interested in publishing a book or, you know, we're in this new society now, millennial society, a society that we, you know, we can do Kindle book or something. But I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but we'll, we'll go across that bridge. But let's get back to the most important thing, weight shift. As I said, so many on the range, so many on the golf course, they just don't get the understanding of what weight shift is. Now, let's say for an example, if I took this, and let's say that I were portraying this as being a table. Now, if I had a ball sitting on that table, and if I broke the legs on this side right here, that ball would roll there every single time. So that's telling me the weight is going this way. I don't care how high I lift it up or how big the table legs are, if I break it on this side and this becomes lower, then the weight's going that way. And that's a lot to been the same with the golf swing. Is that when I go to make a golf swing, you know, the left leg breaks, everyone talks about it. But the thing is, they talk about you load into the right leg, you load into the right leg, and then from there you shift over into the left leg. But let me tell you what the problem is with is that it's just a little bit something as an athlete that I understand. If I shift weight into this right thigh, let's just say this, these thighs are receivers. If I shift weight into this right thigh, the first thing is going to happen when I go to move maybe to the left or whatever, the weight is going to go from the thigh down to the leg. And what people don't understand, that there is a difference between the thigh and the leg is defined. Anything below the knee is considered the leg. And I don't care if you go to shift your weight, however you do it. If you go to shift your weight, if you load into this thigh, the weight is going to go there. And that's why you catch a lot of people falling back. That's why people are trying to spin real fast to get over here. It puts a lot of strain and stress on your hips, your body, your back, all sorts of stuff. But to really understand What's happening in the weight shift is this. It's showing it to you. When we break this leg, if you're going to see if I get in a good back swing position. If I break this leg, this leg right here is my brace. But my weight and my power is right here in this left thigh. Why? Because, as I was explaining, the, the thigh acts sort of like a train depot. It's like all the energy comes into there. You know, it's just like as, as a depot. All the trains come in. And then what happens is they get on different tracks and they disperse the energy out in what, to whatever direction it's going. So when I get to the top of my swing and I go to make my downswing, the energy is stored here. This right here, this is passive. It's soft. It's nothing really there. If anything, you know, the lower right leg is holding on to it a little bit. But the energy is here. I'm feeling the energy into this thigh. So now when I go to make my downswing, bam, as I drop down, the energy goes where it's supposed to go, from the thigh down to the leg. It does it every single time. From the thigh down to the leg. And as Harvey Pinnock said, if your weight is left, it is almost impossible to hit the ball fat. 
So as I said, I break. Weight is energy. Energy is stored in there. And that energy allows me to shift the weight from here down to my leg, like I just described. And I'm always, always going to be on my left side. Why is this so important? It's so important for this simple reason. Just look at it. If I was running and I lift this leg up, this thigh brings this leg up, and it goes down to the ground, the weight is going to go from here, or energy going to go from here down to there. And then this thigh is going to come up and bring this one, and the energy is going to go from here to there, and it repeats itself. So the energy is not going to go from this thigh to this thigh to this leg. I mean, you, it just doesn't work like that. You got to understand the sequence, the, the athletic. It's, a, it's an athletic move, but it's the simplest move that you possibly can imagine. So once again, as I said, all you have to do is when you're making a backswing, Load into this energy. Load the energy. And I'm not, there's a difference as I'm saying energy and weight shift. I'm putting the energy into this left thigh. Because it's a that's what those big old muscles do. They're catching the energy. And then from there, I'm shifting the weight, boom, from this big thigh all the way down to this leg. I basically call it into my dorsiflexion. And bam. And the thing is, it's absolute. It does it every single time. That's how the legs move if you're marching, but it doesn't matter. The weight in here is not going to shift back to there because the energy from here is going to go straight down to this leg. I mean, straight down to it is exactly what it's going to do. And what we're trying to do in golf, we're trying to get to our left side. Well, we're already there. We just got to understand there's a difference between how we store energy and how we shift weight. We need to store the energy to be able to shift the weight. I truly believe, because I tested it out with someone today, that, uh, you know, yeah, it was strange, but uh, a, a guy, no, I, I just, I was bored at the range today. I don't really like giving really good stuff away, but it was something I wanted to do. But um, I showed him that, and it just shocked the crap out of him. He hit the ball really, really well. He was hitting it further, and as I told him, I said, man, I've never seen you hit a ball that high. He usually hit worm burners. But anyway, you know, he's a fast-talking New Yorker. But that's okay. You know, I'm a fast-talking West Virginian. But anyway, still yet, if you get a great understanding of how to shift the weight and the difference in itself between storing energy and shifting weight, then you're on to a better golf understanding of the golf swing because once again as I said that energy to weight shift is an absolute it cannot be argued that's exactly what happens it happens every single day without conscious thought once again this is Charles Calhoun aka the shade tree pro always good golfing